Hi, this is Mark Gaylor, Adobe Photoshop Ambassador for the Asia-Pacific region here. And we're going to discuss or uh, feature my top 20 all-time favorite uh, tips and techniques for when working in Photoshop CC. Uh, tip number one is going to be looking at the way we can apply filters um, non-destructively. And I'm talking about applying a filter as a smart filter. Okay, so here we have a, an image of Zosia uh, and it's a regular background layer. Okay, but if I come up to the filter, rather than applying the filter directly from these menus, I can come up to the second item on the list here and choose convert for smart filters. Now this is what a smart photographer would be doing because now we have a smart object. And so the filters will be applied in such a fashion that we can readjust any of those settings in the filter at any time. We don't need to undo and then reapply that filter. It works in a similar way to adjustment layers. Okay, so let's uh, try and find a filter that we want to apply. I'll come up to the filter menu and I'm going to scroll down to the filter gallery. Now typically this is zoomed in to 100% so I'm going to choose a fit in view option here so I can see all of my image. Now it's applied the last filter that I've used and this is uh, one of my favorite filters in the filter gallery. Okay, it's the diffuse glow filter. I don't have to worry too much about the settings here because at any time in the future applying it as a smart filter I'm quickly able to go back and readjust any of these settings. For instance I've uh, I've taken the graininess down to zero because I want really smooth highlight tones. I don't want that look of the film grain here. Okay so let's just uh, apply this filter and you can see that uh, being applied as a smart filter, I have this smart filter mask here. Now this mask will allow me to uh, hide any of the effect in regions that I don't want it to appear. Uh, so that's a little bit more sophisticated than applying it directly to the layer in a global or holistic fashion. Okay, at any time I want to go back and adjust those settings, I just need to double click uh, the filter name there and now that gives me access to all of the settings. Settings. I'll just hit cancel there. The other thing that we have on this uh, smart filter is if I move over to the right side, just uh, to the right of the name of the filter, I can double click to edit the filter blending options. Uh, I'll just double click so we can see those. Now I can scroll back the opacity of that filter. So if I only want to apply that filter at 50%, it's a very simple way of doing that. Okay, alternatively, I could apply a blend mode to the filter. Here I'll apply a contrast blend mode such as overlay, which being a contrast blend mode, it increases the contrast and also adds a little bit to the saturation. And I'll set that back to normal because I like the filter in its standard setting and select OK. But the most important thing about this workflow is options. We always have options. OK, so let's take a look at these um, smart filters on another couple of images. OK, let's come over to my second uh, image. It's not actually an image at all. It's, uh, it's a movie. OK, I'll just uh, double click on my timeline panel there to open it up. And you can see that I have a movie of these elephants. And if I just scroll through the timeline you can actually see that uh, there's a myriad of frames there. Now if I was to apply a, a filter in a standard way it would only get applied to one frame in that movie. So really what I want to do is if I'm going to apply a filter I want to apply to every frame in that movie. And the way we can do that is uh, simply either from the filter menu choose convert for smart filters or we can right click on the layer itself and choose convert to smart object. Okay, once we've done that, uh, we can now apply filters and that will um, the filter will be applied to all frames in that movie. Um, one of the uh, clever filters that was added for CC, however, was this camera raw filter. Even though this wasn't a raw image, I can use all of the controls inside of the raw dialog box in order to adjust this movie. This is great news uh, for people who are editing movies. Now, typically you can't take a movie 
heavy into the um, develop module of Lightroom but effectively this is what we're doing we're accessing the develop module which is Adobe Camera Raw inside of Photoshop CC so you can see this movie was captured with reasonably low contrast but I can simply set a black point uh, for that movie I can set a white point for that movie uh, an overall exposure value I can change the white balance uh, I can add clarity uh, to this movie um, the other things that I can do is I can also do those uh, adjustments uh, very atypical adjustments and adjustments that we don't normally have access to uh, very easily inside of Premiere Pro uh, I can come down to the FX panel and choose to add a small amount of vignetting to this movie okay so uh, the world is your oyster uh, inside of the Adobe Camera Raw interface and when I um, apply this uh, filter the Camera Raw filter it's applied to every frame in that movie and so now I have um, a graded or color graded movie done inside of Photoshop CC now obviously if I save this file it will be a PSD file okay so if I want to um, export a, a rendered movie I'll just click on that little icon down at the bottom of the timeline and now I can export this as as a new movie clip that has been graded I'll hit cancel on this one Okay, let's take a look at uh, one more um, f image and look at the power of um, uh, smart objects and smart filters. I'll just collapse that timeline panel and I'll do uh, Command uh, Zero to fit on screen. That's Control Zero on a PC. Now we have a composite file here. Now, if I it's finished, the composite is finished. You can see that this image is made up of numerous layers. It's actually called a fixed position composite. Okay, and um, what we're going to do is, are we going to color grade this? Now we could do that using um, a, a traditional adjustment layer, and I'd have to be careful to put that above the top layer so it affects all elements of this composite file. However, if I wanted to use a, um, a split toning feature, which is an Adobe Camera Raw, um, then we can take the whole composite file into the Adobe Camera Raw filter to apply that adjustment. And to simply do that is we just need to shift click from the uh, first layer to the bottom layer so that they're all selected. And then we can right click and choose um, choose convert to smart object now the, um, the people who were quite observant will notice that these were already smart objects they actually contain the raw files in each of those layers but I can nest these smart objects into a new smart object and once that, that has happened I can then go into the filter and choose camera raw filter and so now I can go into the uh, split toning panel uh, for those lovers of automated workflows you can actually save your favorite split toning uh, presets down here in the presets panel in fact you're not restricted to just saving split toning as a preset any settings can be saved as a preset we can quickly apply and color grade a composite image and then I'll select OK to apply that color grading to my composite file. Now if at any time I wanted to access those individual layers of the composite file I'd simply need to just double click this smart object and uh, that will go and open up the nested file that is inside of that smart object. I don't need to make any changes so I'll just close that file and as again you can see we have the camera raw filter down here in the layers panel and if I need to adjust any of those settings I can simply just double click and open up camera raw dialog again. So this is offers a completely non-destructive workflow and that is my first top tip is to explore the use of smart filters um, uh, on smart objects.